morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, welcome. My name is Walid Alskov. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Rebalancers. I'd like to give you a warm welcome to the GeoTAM Challenge Hackathon that we're getting ready to start. So what is this hackathon all about? Well, Max and Robin will tell you a little bit more about it shortly, but just to give you an overview, it is really here to help us calculate what is the total addressable market size within a predefined geospatial area. And I'll explain to you in a minute why this is important. But first, let me share with you a few words about Rebalancers. So Rebalancers is a boutique asset fund manager that is here to invest in nature as critical business infrastructure. And that's the key, critical business infrastructure. And we're here to address essentially five challenges that companies around the world are facing, such as flooding, drought, water quality, biodiversity loss, and carbon emissions. All of these problems or challenges are ones which are caused by climate change and caused by the loss of nature. And they have real economic cost to companies but also to society in general. For example, it was identified that by 2050, uh, access to water, the loss of being able to get quality water to London will cost up to 500 million pounds per day, according to the London Climate Review of 2024. Companies across the UK today, the cost of flooding to them is 82,000 um, pounds per annum, which comes down to roughly 15 billion across the country. So it has a real economic cost, which today there's a budget for it, usually in the form of insurance premiums and in flood defenses. But as, as we've seen recently uh, in Valencia, Spain, flooding can be deadly where close to 100 people have died. So we at Rebounds Earth, we raise funding from the pension industry. So from firemen's pension, from nurses' pension, and from street cleaners' pension. And we allocate this capital to invest in nature as business critical infrastructure to help solve these challenges. Now, who pay us back? It is the companies where we can reduce those 82,000 pounds they already spend in terms of facing the risk of flooding. So in this example here, for example, we're looking at Plymouth and the River Plym, which has a tendency of, flood, of flooding, which has a real economic cost to Sainsbury's, to Princess Yachts, to BMW, Wix and so on. Our proposition is that we do an estimation of if we were to restore the Plym River, what would it cost and what would it do? And it could reduce the risk of flooding between 70, 80, maybe 90 percent. We, we estimate it cost between 20 to 30 million pounds to restore um, the Plym. We would then sign up all those companies who have a tendency of getting flooding on what we call our nature as a service contracts, which is for the next 20, 10, 15 or 20 years. They will pay us a fee, which is roughly to how much they're spending today in terms of flood defenses to help restore this river. Thus, our investment is here to tackle business critical infrastructure. And these are the steps where we assess the flood risk of a, um, of a flood. We sign up the companies to do it, and we ultimately can reduce the cost of flooding. This is our business proposition, but it is centered on our ability to understand in within a quick snapshot, what is a total addressable market size within that specific geolocation? So how much turnover are they making? Because that can give us an indication on how much they, they're spending today in terms of flood mitigation. Being able to understand that helps to accelerate our approach to understanding an addressable market size, how much we can spend for restoring that nature um, uh, landscape, and is there a means for us to make a return to give back to the pension, to the pensioners who've invested into our fund. So helping us crack this uh, challenge with this hackathon is actually critical for the success of Rebalancers. So I invite you all to participate in this. But equally, I want to share a little bit behind our values. Now, we 
fully understand that it doesn't matter how big rebalancers could get. We're never going to be big enough to be able to, to solve this climate nature challenge that we're facing across the globe. That is why that we want to build our digital platform called GPATH, which stands for Geospatial Predictive Analytics Platform, a platform that helps us guide where we can make investments across the UK. We want to build it in an open source manner. Because once we feel the code is stable, strong, and scalable, and that we've used it for a few years to prove that, then we want to release it for other funds to use our application to also make their own investments. Because it's only when you can do this at a planetary scale that we have a chance to take control of climate change and also start reinvesting into nature instead of it treating it as a free public good. So our open source manifesto, which you can check on our website, really states why we want to do this in an open source manner. And of course, all the outputs of this um, hackathon will be shared in a public manner. So I'm going to pass on to Max. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for that, Willid. Um, so I just wanted to give you a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Max. I am an investment analyst here at Rebalance Earth. Um, and just based on the kind of context that, that Willie has just explained and, and the kind of corporate centric model that we, we focus on, um, I wanted to almost piece the puzzle together and explain how this all fits. Um, so it's necessary for us to determine the turnover of individual businesses in the UK. Uh, so that when we map climatic risk or flood risk, uh, we can quantify in financial terms the extent of that impact. Um, so from everything you've likely read on the Hackathon landing page, your mission is to create methods for estimating the turnover of physical business locations in the UK. You may want to present this as an annual figure or a daily figure. Um, it may even fluctuate with days of the week, depending on how kind of granular you'd like to be. Um, we're interested in the turnover of individual stores as a specific location rather than the company as a whole. So where for instance, we might look at Sainsbury's, a publicly traded company. We can see in their annual reports the turnover for the entire company. Um, but it's not as simple as just dividing this by the amount of stores in the country. This is because there's variation between each store. So there might be one a small Sainsbury's in, in a, a rural location, which is not the most affluent area, which will have a lower turnover when affected by a flood uh, than, than, say, a Sainsbury's mega store in the city of London. Um, so essentially, we're looking to identify this, this disparity uh, between each business, and, and uh, that is the challenge, um, not just for Sainsbury's, but for uh, a variety of business types. Uh, so it could be a hardware store, it could be a pub, it could be anything that is essentially uh, almost a, a brick and mortar boots on the ground business. And I, I, I'll, I'll explain a bit more about this later on. Um, this is a hard problem. This is this is a, a big, big challenge, uh, which is open ended. Um, and hasn't been done before, and especially hasn't been done in an open source manner. Um, we, we do massively appreciate this, um, and, and we believe that kind of creativity and analytical skills are, are key to, to cracking this. Um, again, I wanted to give you some context as to why we picked Manchester. Um, so the, to hone the focus on Manchester is, is because we, it's a densely populated area with a, a highly diverse range of uh, businesses uh, and different types of businesses. Um, we also feel that a uh, proof of concept solution kind of once um, developed fully uh, will, will be strong enough to uh, apply to the rest of the UK, um, giving us a kind of comprehensive result. Um, and again, based on our, our landing page, you might also be wondering how our, or, or why we, we haven't really mentioned our, our business model and almost any mention of climatic risk or flood. Um, this is simply because you know the, the challenge is large enough as is, and, and we don't want to uh, detract from from the prime focus, which is just determining the turnover of these business locations, rather than the business of locations, the turnover of business locations affected by just climatic risk. Um, it adds another layer, which which we are intending to use it for and and kind of manipulate once it's been complete and implemented. Um, also, this data set once complete will be massively versatile um, and, and, and kind of useful for, for other areas uh, just outside of climate as well. Um, 
And so I, I think I alluded it to, to it before, but we're, we're not looking for a, a fully working implementation. So like many other hackathons do, they last for, you know, longer than, than, than ours does, um, even, even months sometimes. Um, we simply need a, a proof of concept solution. Um, we need a, a creative method. Uh, we're, we're not looking for a working implementation. Um, however, the winning entries of this competition, as I'm sure you already know, will potentially be offered, uh, depending on the quality of their work, uh, the opportunity to continue developing it at our fund. Um, so yeah, we're looking for kind of unique, creative, uh, logically thought out and, and feasible methods to determine turnover. Um, crucially, this needs to be something that can scale and ideally something that's widely applicable to, to brick and mortar physical business locations. So I said I'd touch upon this earlier and we are not looking for, for say, a, a law firm. Uh, we're, we're not interested in that because, for example, when a flood hits a law firm, it's very easy for them to up and move and work remotely. We, we are interested in, in businesses which are primarily uh, well, massively impacted by by flood events. So, for example, um, phys physical business locations where where it requires in person interactions, um, like a home base or a hardware store or um, or a pub or a supermarket, any, anything along those lines. Um, there is a, a massive variety which which will also be um, integrated within the business rate data, which Robin will explain after this. Um, so just quickly to run through the rules um, beyond the terms and condition document we have in our website. Um, this is open to anyone globally. However, it will primarily operate in the GMT time zone. Um, we encourage participants to register before November 20th, 2024, which is when we will close uh, entries for the competition. Um, participants must only register once. Uh, if you register as part of a team and a solo entry, uh, you may be disqualified. Uh, participation is free, uh, fully virtual. Um, teams can have any numbers of members uh, and individual entries are entirely welcome. Um, teams, however, if you are part of a team, you must designate a primary member of that team um, who will be responsible for the distribution of the prize money as well as communicating with us, um, which will be communicated on via Discord. Uh, all projects must be started and completed during the hackathon period. Pre-existing projects are, are not allowed. Um, however, the use of pre-existing data sets are, and we, we massively encourage this. Um, all projects must be made open source and publicly available by November 26, 2024, uh, which is when the competition closes. Um, and we encourage the use of freely available data sets. Uh, however, we do also and will accommodate to the use of paid data sets, so long as they are, I suppose, reasonably priced um, and, and reasonably useful. Um, this will be up to our discretion. However, if a team does come forward and say we would like to pay for this data set uh, and we agree to it, we will make it public to everybody in the Discord server or all the participants of the competition. Um, when you're submitting your final proof of concept implementation, um, please include a, a readme file, which kind of explains to us how we would install it, set it up uh, and, and use it. Um, this could be in the form of a readme file on github or, or it could be a pdf slide or a video uh, this could be an unlisted video on youtube honestly it's up to you however you would like to present this um, we again would like everybody to adhere to our code of conduct which we we describe in our terms and conditions um, any breach of this will may result in disqualification um, and and we ask that everybody treats all participants with respect um, harassment discrimination is not allowed um so that's it from me uh, i'm going to pass over to robin um and best of luck hello i'm robin wilson and i'm the lead geospatial developer at rebalance earth and i'm going to talk a bit about the technical aspects of the hackathon so as we've mentioned the aim of this hackathon is to develop an open source proof of concept method for estimating the turnover of individual business locations in the uk and I'm going to talk about how we're going to score your hackathon submissions, the data we're going to provide, and a few ideas of how you could take this forward. 
So for scoring, as I've mentioned before, we don't necessarily know what the right answer is here. Some hackathons will give you a load of columns of data, another column that you're trying to predict, and the sole purpose is to develop a machine learning technique that will predict that column from the rest of them. Our hackathon is broader and we hope more interesting and amenable to novel ideas. And that's because we don't have that column of the right answer. We have some estimates about company turnovers already. We have some ways of gathering further ground truth or validation data in the future. Uh, but that how close you've got to these answers is only going to be part of the scoring. So we're going to split the scoring into five categories. The first is how close you are to getting these correct answers, or at least plausibly correct answers. But the other ones are how novel is the approach taken? How simple is the approach taken? How broadly applicable is it, both geographically to different sectors and so on? And five is how well you've leveraged open or freely available data. And these are all equally weighted. So if you come up with a great idea that's really novel, really simple, has great potential, but doesn't at the moment necessarily give really accurate answers, that could still score relatively highly in the final scoring. And also the scoring is going to be 50% scored by the judges from Rebalance Earth, the organising team, but also 50% from the other teams in the hackathon. So the other teams will all score you on these points. We will combine that with the Rebalance Earth scores and rank them. And then the top three projects will win the prizes. And the prizes are £2,000 for the first prize, £1,000 for the second prize and £500 for the third prize. So we're going to provide you with various data sets to help you with this. And the key data set we're going to provide is the open local business rate data. So this is a commercial data set that we've bought access to. Uh, we have permission to let you use uh, an extract of this data for this hackathon on the condition that you don't share it with other people. Uh, and this gives you information on businesses in an area, in our case, in the area of Manchester, although this example here is actually from Plymouth. Um, and uh, it gives you the business rate values paid to the local authority. So this is a tax that's paid by businesses in the UK who um, pay this to all the local authority. And it's based on uh, the uh, size of the business and the location of its of its premises and so on. So here's just a few examples of some of the columns you'll get. You'll get an address for the business, a category. You can see shops and pubs and hairdressers and cafes. Uh, a floor area for the category for the business and a rateable value, which is the amount sent to uh, the local authority paid paid to the local authority. There's actually a lot more columns as well. We've got things about rate payer names, which often gives you business rates, a uh, business names, um, the amount of rates paid and the rate reliefs that were provided by the local authority to reduce the rates paid. We've also got geographic data like the center of the postcode location uh, for that business and various other things. And this data will be provided as a standard CSV file, but also as a geopatch file, which is a geospatial data set, which allows you to easily integrate it into GIS systems or other geographic tools. Um, we really want you to come up with some novel and interesting ways of taking this forward. So we don't want to give you too many predefined ideas of routes to go down. However, just as a few ideas uh, that could hopefully lead to further and better ideas from you, here are a few simple approaches you could take. You could extract some known companies from the data sets, maybe big supermarkets, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Aldi, Lidl, maybe other big uh, pub chains or, or restaurant chains and manually write some simple rules for estimating turnover. So you could do some searching online, read some reports, get an idea about turnover per square foot, and then do some simple calculations. You could broaden that then to other companies, manufacturing companies, restaurants, and so on, warehouses, other types of companies like that. Or you could bring in some other simple open data of various kinds to contribute. To make it a bit more complex, you could bring in some other exciting data sets on business financials. We're aware of a few of these, which we'll let you know about, but there's also all sorts of other data out there that we'd love you to experiment and find. You could start linking business rates data to Companies House data. Companies House is the organisation in the UK that holds the business register and uh, receives documents like annual reports and financial statements. You could even bring in AI and LLMs to read those company documents and try and extract figures that are useful for estimating turnover. 
Or you could take a fully geospatial approach and try and get another number of metrics that might be related to turnover and could therefore be used to predict it, like the wealth of the surrounding area from census data or geodemographic data, the sizes of buildings, satellite images for the number of cars in car parks or lorries in parking spots. There's all sorts of different approaches you could take, and that's just a few of them. In terms of support, we have a Discord server where most of the communication will be happening, so please join that. You can ask any questions in the channels there, you can talk to other participants, you can talk to us, you can raise concerns or queries with us through that. And we'll be running a two drop-in support sessions every day during the hackathon on a voice channel in the Discord server uh, from 9 till 10 a.m. and 2 till 3 p.m. UK time, which hopefully gives two different times that will work wherever you are in the world. And those uh, drop-in sessions can be used to ask any questions, to talk about purchasing data sets, to show what you've done and ask if you're going in the right direction, anything like that we can support you with. So just before I go, I want to really encourage you to think outside the box, be flexible, try things, try and use this as a learning opportunity for yourself, as well as a development opportunity for you comb combining with us. Uh, we will be flexible in how we score the submissions. As you saw with the scoring criteria, it's very broad. A great idea that isn't 100% working or is only maybe 20 or 30% working could still score well. Something that gives us a very rough estimate of business uh, turnover for a lot of businesses could still score well, even compared to something that gives us a very accurate turnover estimation for just a few businesses. So please be flexible be broad, come up with novel ideas, and hopefully we'll get something really cool out of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. And uh, thank you all of you for listening throughout this webinar. We're very excited to have you all participate with us in this hackathon, and we can't wait to see some of the great codes you're all gonna develop. So happy, Happy uh, coding, and hopefully we'll see you very soon. Cheers.